I've always been down the beach with my family. My dad took me down to the beach when I was young. I played football and rugby when I was younger, but I don't know, just going in the sea was kind of my way of escaping. Growing up in, in Cornwall, in the UK, just in general, we are always seen as the underdogs. And when I was a junior, when I was in my teens, it was just always seen as like a joke that a British person was at a surf comp. So mentality that we are the underdogs, so we always want to go and prove everyone wrong. I'm Luke Dillon, I'm 25, I live in Newquay, Cornwall, and I'm a Great Britain surfer. It's all self-funding, so um, it's up to me to go out and find companies that are interested in my story and, and helping me on my way. Um, and it's with, like, with cycling and tennis and, and golf. Um, they're normally backed by the government as well, so they get an injection of cash that helps all their um, athletes go to the next level. And in surfing, um, in Britain especially, we don't have that, so it's all off our own back, and there's only really a handful of guys in Great Britain that can go out and do those competitions, so it's really hard with almost fighting amongst ourselves to try and get these sponsorships. And it's quite a brutal sport, really, because if you can't get the funding, then you can't do it and it's, you're fighting with these guys from around the world who do get it. In the winter, um, I find it really hard because like today, we're in six mil boots, gloves, six mil wetsuit with a hood, um, and there's guys in, in around the world who never get out of board shorts, really, so we're a disadvantage of that fact. It's a hard one. When you go around the world competing and you lose first round, it's, it can be like, what, like, do I want to carry on doing this? Do I, you know, what's, the, what's my next move? But then you've got to take your losses like you take your wins, so you've just got to suck it up and go hard, go home, train harder, um, surf better, get fitter, um, and, and do better. Um, but there was a period a few years ago where I lost my main sponsor, and I was sat at home and I didn't have any money, and it was kind of... I thought, oh, I'm, gonna to, I'm gonna have to go and get a job and go to uni. And then I carried on grinding it out, got a few results and got picked up by some companies. And it's just, it's, it's like that with, with surfing and I guess in other top level sports as well. Where it's kind of one day you're on top of the world and, and one day you, you know, you're debating whether you've got that job anymore. So I think that's the hunger that keeps me going day in, day out is um, fear of losing really. I'm uh, Tony Dillon, I'm uh, Luke's dad and I'm his uh, manager. I've been supportive of Luke as I am with his sister, Tamsin, um, in everything that they do. But Luke um, was a bit of a protégé. He started surfing a boogie board because I surfed, I was always out the back. And he would say, Dad, I want to come out the back. I said, well, if you can get out the back on a boogie board, then you can understand the wave movements and the way the, the, the tide comes in and out and where the waves are dangerous and where they're not. And you can get a surfboard. So at uh, eight years old, he proved to me that he could get a surfboard, so we got him aboard and then uh, we decided to enter him in a contest. And we entered him in the, uh, at the time, it was called the Quicksilver King of the Groms. It was a, a world event. And uh, he, the British leg was here at Fistral, so we entered Luke in it and he won it. He wouldn't say it himself, but he's absolutely smashed his junior career. He kind of won everything, you know, he's beating people three years older than him. At 13, he was winning under 16s. At, uh, at 15, he was winning the under 16s and the under 18s. He's always been on the sidelines and I can guarantee if I'm in Australia and I wake up in the morning, I've got 15 messages of him about the conditions or what it's been like or how I need to surf a heat or... So he's definitely number one fan. I'm very proud of him, you know. He's done some amazing, amazing things in his life. We've got cupboards full of trophies, you know, and he's, he's just probably won everything out there. And it's just now he's got to do it at the very, very top. And of course, the higher up you go, the harder that last little few yards are. So it's Olympics in a few months, and I'm hoping that 
I need to have a good year. Um, first of all, I've got the English Championships I need to go and do um, at home and then on to the British Nationals and then that's how you get in the Team GB team for the, um, the World Championships. And then that's where I have to finish roughly in about the top 16 in the world to hopefully go to the Olympics. After the Olympics, I reckon you'll see a lot more youngsters come down. They've just built a wave pool up in Bristol, they're building another one in Birmingham. Yeah, we might see, a, uh, might see the next world champ from London or Birmingham. Every competition that I go to now, there's three or four of the world's top 30 there, so I'm, I'm in around that level competing with these guys, but I'm watching them in amazing waves in the best, best place in the world competing in surfing, and that's where I want to be. So it kind of hurts when you're at home today, like wrapped up in a jumper and a beanie, and it's, you can't go out and you're watching these guys and the best of the best around the world. So it really like, motivates you to want to go out and do well and prove everyone wrong that you're not just this little guy from Britain that you can actually keep going.